those events triggered, I think, a whole set of pieces of work across the Trust that were really about encouraging staff to understand that change is in their hands and that actually people should feel empowered to get on with doing the things that they think are really important in terms of achieving a better experience or a better outcome for patients. When patients and staff said to us, why can't we have a strategy that talks about the next five years that we can all sign up to? And we've done that and I think we've done that very effectively. They said to us during the listening events, why can't we have a set of values? Lots of our staff are brilliant and there was a real palpable sense that people wanted to have a set of values almost by which they could be measured. So we have launched our, our values as well during the course of all of this time. People told me the trust was actually too complicated. There were too many silos in the organisation. Couldn't we simplify that? And when you hear that, you do think this is something we've got to get at and change. Subsequently, we organised ourselves into three divisions. And certainly, lots of external stakeholders tell me that having that simplified approach is really helping them understand how to deal with Mercy Care as an organisation. We've got a major new development out at Walton Clockview. And I would say with you know, a fair level of certainty now, by 2019, every patient who is an inpatient who requires a bed in Mercy Care will have a private ensuite room. And that every other patient and then every member of staff in Mercy Care will work in a new or a newly refurbished building. People have told me they didn't think that was ever going to happen. But you know, you go out there now and we've got the most wonderful facility starting to develop. We'll take charge of that at the end of this calendar year and we'll be moving patients in there uh, during the first quarter of 2015. This response that said, actually, we spend too much time in front of computers, in front of screens rather than in front of patients and their carers and their families. So, you know, we have now had for over a year one of our senior consultants become our chief clinical information officer understanding where value is added, where value is not added when we engage with information collection and so on. And we're now in the process of going through um, a procurement for a new clinical information system. We have to work out how to live within our means. But, but I think the thing that we've done that's making a difference in the trust around that is, instead of saying, let's um, reduce the quality of everything we do, because we've got less money to do it with. We've said, let's increase the quality of everything we do with less money. We have started to talk about the idea of perfect care uh, inside the trust. And again, that exercises some people, it excites other people, probably in equal measure. But what it does do is get people to think about the increasing actual international evidence now that it is cheaper to provide high quality care the first time round without mistakes than it is to, in a sense, keep cutting, run the risk that you end up with lots of mistakes and having to go back to the start of a pathway and retreat or readmit, all of those sorts of things that, that uh, we know happens. We introduced uh, a while back a programme called No Force First, which was really to say that we should not, as the first step, attempt to restrain patients, as the first step that there are tools and techniques and approaches that we can use that de-escalate tension between staff and patients. What we've seen on the pilot sites, huge reductions in some instances of uh, the level of aggression on wards, um, big reductions in the level of physical or medication-led restraint. And actually what we're seeing with that also then is a reduction in the number of days that staff are having off due to injury. I think I'm in a very fortunate position to have um, some of the best staff you could, you could hope to have. I see all the time our staff go that extra distance so often um, to make sure that it's just right for our patients or for people who have left the service uh, or for, for carers who, you know, we, we should never forget. Um, we should never forget actually that a lot of particularly severe mental illness um, affects families, it just doesn't affect the person involved. And I think if, if we create the circumstances, uh, the perfect care circumstances, to allow people to pursue that mission, then I think we're going to quell the storm, we'll ride the storm, you know, and we're going to be in a much better place when we get there.